I've done so many videos on Denali, K2 installations, but I've always like mixed them all up together so you see a bit of everything. And historically, I've always fitted a K2 on the back end of doing a big Denali bundle because that's where the deal is. The deal is when you buy a K2 from me as an add-on for, for a Denali bundle and an installation, I only charge 50 pounds to install the K2, whereas this customer is only having a K2 installation. So obviously he's paying a bit more because I can't offset any of the costs with the installation fees on the Denali. So I'm just gonna show you straight up, having a bike in fresh, nothing on it, no extra electronics, no can smarts, nothing like that. We're just putting a K2 in, that's it. And I'm gonna show you right from start to finish how to install it on an R1250 GS. This is an R1250 GS HP rally, but that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if you've got a GS or a GS rally or a GS HP, the kind of same principle applies for the R1250 GS. All right, so stay tuned if you wanna see exactly how to install the K2 from start to finish, screw by screw. All right, so just contemplating whether to use a sky lift for this, but we don't need to. We don't, there's no reason to lift the bike up at, at a certain height. So I'm literally just gonna pop it on the center stand. Right, so as I said, screw for screw. So let's take off the, the rear seat, take off the main seat. Right, so I'm gonna take off the rear rack so we've got complete access to all under here because there's gonna be quite a few wires. And we're, we're gonna put a lot of things underneath here. So with this panel here, what you do is you literally slide it backwards. So those two screws there, and then you slide backwards and it pops off. And it's literally these two tiny lugs slide into here and here. And that's how it goes back on again. You, you pop it over the top slightly backwards and then, you, and then you, you slide it forward until it clicks in. And it's those two long screws to secure it in. And the same the other side. So one, two, and now I'm just gonna slide the panel backwards. And there it is. Now I'm just trying to establish whether we actually need to take the tank off, which we really don't, because all we're gonna do is fit the camera to the very, very front and then run the wire through the side. Uh, 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 literally uh, al along the side down here and then tuck it in so it comes out through here. All the other wires are gonna be at the back of the bike and obviously we've got the wires coming down for the battery terminals as well. Because the camera is going to be attached to the front just here, that's where the customer's asked, no sorry, the customer's asked to have it attached here. He has asked to have it attached there. It's gonna, the wire's gonna come Round the, under this panel here and through down along here and then we're going to tuck it into the, the guttering, it's like a channel along here and then bring it up through here so it meets up with the DVR. So let's get this side panel off. We don't have to undo these two screws here. We're going to undo, there are one, two, I think they're three and literally on the inside of this panel. Sorry, I forgot. And there's a third screw just behind here. So you, all you have to do is just bring the, the screwdriver up and undo that one as well. And then it pops off. Now, I don't know if you saw that or not, there's like, there's like a little spring, spring-loaded clip here. 
So when it goes back on again, you've got to kind of like pop it over that clip. So it's like pops on and then you put the screws back in. So that was just one, two, three, four, five, five screws to take that panel off. Okay, and we're gonna have to do it the other side because I need to take the nose section of this bike off. So we're gonna have to take it off this side as well. So not these two. One, two. I'll be honest, the sky lift would help on this particular, what I'm doing here, because I can lift the front up and I wouldn't have to be on my knees necessarily. So that's all three screws on the inside. Now we can literally pull that off like that. Right, so now what we want to do is take this nose section off completely. So to do this, we've got a screw at the top, just there. We've got another screw here at the side, then the other side. So under the nose, there's three screws. There's only three screws you can see. You've got one there, one there, and one there. You need to undo all those three screws. And then with that, the nose just pulls off. Now I'm just gonna have a look at it to see whether I need to take any more panels off because the wire is gonna come through here, through this tiny channel just there. I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. We can get through with all that, yeah. So I can see a route through here, around the back of there. It's not a lot to take this top off. It's just because he's got a tank bag ring, I need to take that off. You've got one, two, three screws there. You've got the two at the back I've already taken off earlier. I didn't need to do that. And you've got a screw here to take the side off. You've got another screw inside there. And then that whole side comes off. You've also got a little black plastic rivet down here, which I've shown in other videos that can be a bit of a nightmare to get off. So if you can get away with not taking this off, then it's a little bit easier. Uh, like if I'm doing a Denali install and I'm putting loads of harnesses through, it's no question about it. All this comes off, the top comes off, the tank comes out, but it's just not necessary for this. Right, and now I'm gonna take the battery cover off, hoping I'm not gonna find anything horrendous behind here. So I've noticed there's no grease whatsoever on these two grommets, so if that's your case, if you've got a bike and there's absolutely no grease on those grommets, be super careful when pushing the, the lugs back into the grommets because it tends to push the grommet out the other side and it falls on the floor and you lose it. So uh, either just wet it with your finger or stick, just put a little dollop of grease, grease back on those grommets so it slides in nicely. All right, take that red cover off. Right, okay, so when you are installing the camera here, this will limit the movement on the front windscreen. Now, I've had this discussion with the customer already, and he's happy to have it here. It's the same place I have it on mine. We've got a short windscreen. He has it in the up position all the time. But if you have the camera here, you cannot lower this down. Not unless you do some fancy doodah thing with the bracket and, and make your own bespoke bracket. With the bracket that comes in the kit, you have to have the windscreen up the whole time. So he wants it there. Other failing that, you would fit it down here, uh, I, I literally just behind the, the indicator. So the camera sits there, which gives you a slightly limited view going across the bike. Uh, whereas, but it's, it's not that bad. Whereas the one on the front, you see everything. So unfortunately we can't use this screw again because the shoulder that's on this screw uh, won't, um, it's too big to go through the, the bracket that comes in the kit. Right, so this is the front camera. It's the one which has got more harness on it. So we need to prepare the camera first. So in the kit, you're gonna get this strip of 3M. It's, it's a piece of rubber with 3M sticky one side. What we do is we peel the back off and where it says in of, that is the top of the camera. And then I'm gonna put this along here and just wrap that around the camera. And 
And then this is the, the bracket which goes over the top. Just need to open it a fraction so I can slide it over that rubber I've just put on there. And then just try and centralize it a little bit. There we go. And don't forget to take off the, the cover at the end. The amount of times I've done that and left it on there. Right, this is the bracket that's going to go on the bike and, and it's going to sit in between. So something like this, you, we're going to mess around with lots of different angles to make sure the camera is facing exactly where it's supposed to be. Just double check that doesn't go through there. No, it doesn't. Yes, yeah, so as, as I confirmed, the shoulder of this screw doesn't go through it, which is a crying shame. Now, there's no screws that come in the kit which will exchange for this, because the whole thing with, with a K2, it, it's designed to go on any bike. Now, what I can do is uh, I personally have lots of screws here for different things. So I literally source my own screw for the job, and it just so happens I've got screw here, which has got no shoulder. So that will fit fine. And you can see the depth of it will be the same as the original, if that was to go through. Right, so let's go and put this on the bike. Before we actually mount that, we're gonna thread the plug side of the camera through here, so it comes down under here. So I'll try and show you as much of that as I can and be a cameraman at the same time. So I'm looking through here and but by being down here at the same level, I can see it's quite easy to pick a route. It's not difficult whatsoever. So I'm gonna come through here, poke it through. Go around the other side. And I don't know if you can see it, it's just there. Right, so I need to make sure it's not getting in the way of anything else. So you've got the DIN socket here on the bike. I'm gonna slide it around the back of the electrics for the DIN socket. This is just all about common sense, making sure you don't end up pulling a wire around something which needs to move or be operational. Obviously the screen has an operation to it. So you need to make sure it doesn't get in the way of the, the operation for the screen, which I can see it's not. So now I'm gonna pull that through. I'm happy with the, with the path that's taken. And as you pull it, be careful you don't smash the camera. Obviously it's a very heavy duty camera, so any small shocks is gonna be fine. But you know, it's a brand new item. We don't want to, to ruin anything. So I'm gonna leave that just dangling there because that's actually gonna go in here, but I'll show you that close up when we do that in a moment. All right, so here it is. So when it's on, we want to, want to pay attention to the how the wire is going to curl at the back. But I just want to get this on first. I'm actually thinking I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to change this. I can see Enov have changed the mount slightly. It never used to be this big. The shorter piece wasn't this big beforehand. So I'm struggling to get that to fit in the way it used to. So what I'm going to do is just undo this top piece again. Let that hang. I'm now gonna grab the, the screw to screw it to the bike. And I'm gonna start putting that in now. It's a fiddly old job. Okay. So I'm not gonna tighten this up just yet. I'm just gonna leave it loose because we wanna play around with all the different angles. Right, and then that's gonna come on here. Good. Okay, I'm gonna tighten this one up now. Nice and tight, nice and level. And now I'm going to fit the camera back on again. Now, if you find that when you fit it, you can't have this mount level, and it's, it's, it's slightly on the twist, it doesn't matter because you can make further adjustments to, to this part here 
And you can also loosen this part and twist the camera itself. Because the, the end result is we want the in of writing at the top of the camera to be facing completely upwards. That way you'll get a completely level image. So I'm just loosening these side bit. Well, you need, need to loosen one just so we can get a pivot on it. All right. Okay, loosen the other side a little bit. There we go. That's really good. So bearing in mind it's on the center stand. So when I take it off the center stand, the nose will go up a little bit, but we can make final adjustments when it's on the ground. But there we go. That's the front camera fitted to the bike. Right, so I've changed my mind because I can't see a way unless I do a bodge job and that's not what I do. I can't see a way how I can get this front camera cable not neatly through underneath here. I, I, I don't like it if it's coming underneath here over the suspension. I don't want it exposed to the outside elements when it's down here. I'd rather it all stay nice and neat coming through here where, where all the OEM harnesses are coming through. So I can't see a way how we can get it through here without taking this bridge piece off. That's the, the seat height adjuster at the front and that's got to come off and to get that off, because you've got a limited access to it because of the side panel. So the side panel is going to come off, but don't worry, it's simple. Just watch how I do it. So you've got one screw here. You've got another screw down here. You've then got a screw here. And this is pretty cool. I've got, I've got, I've got a special screwdriver where I can do this. I've, failing that, just get a short screwdriver in there. Now the screw in the middle is a bigger screw. So let me just get the one the other side out first. Right, and now I'm taking the one out right in the middle behind the handlebar. Now, if you haven't got a tank holder on here, it's just standard OEM. You don't have to do anything around the fuel tank. So that top cover can now come off. So all you do is get your fingers under here, and you've got like popper springs all the way along here and you just have to be kind of forceful with it really. There we go, that's now come off. It's uh, these little metal clips on the inside and they push down onto the plastic grommets here and they, you've got other metal clips here that push into these plastic holes and it just literally just pops back on then, then you put the screws back on. And then you've got one, two, screws here so just inside here there's a tiny little plastic rivet and if you've got a tool like this perfect you can get out with a screwdriver all you do is you get this underneath it and you start levering it or leveraging it out and then you get the pin and with it like that this will now come out and then you get the other part of the, the rivet there. So that's got to go back in and put the pin through. So with it like this, this will now just come away. Right, so now that's like that, I'm going to take the, this part off here. Now we don't need to take the left hand side of the tank off, but what I am going to do is loosen it off because I can't access this bolt. So I've undone those, those top, two top screws there. And then the screw on, on the other side that we've already taken off, I'm gonna take off one screw down here. That now gives me movement so I can access this. We don't need to take it off. There's another, there's a, this one screw and a rivet holding that on. So with this, You've got um, a little plug here. They always put a little cable tie around here. So we're going to cut that cable tie. Unplug the fuse holder. So there's a couple of fuses in here. We're going to be using one of these fuses later on. This customer hasn't fitted his uh, pro chip yet. I'll have to have a chat with him about that later. I'm going to see him. Right, so now that's free to come off. And if you want to, you can put a, a retaining screw back into to here, if it makes you feel happier, just so you know it's not going to come off, just put it finger tight, and there we are, done. Now we, can, we have access to getting underneath here, you see we've got movement there on, on the fuel tank. 
We don't need to take the fuel tank off. You can if you want to, if you feel adventurous, but it's not an adventure, is it? It's just a GS. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably have to edit that bit out. <laughs> I think this bike is great. I love the I love the standard GS. I love it. If you're a subscriber, you damn well know I love them. Right, so I'm gonna start feeding this wire back to the back of the bike. So what we're gonna do first is this little cover here, this little channel cover, we're gonna take this off. All right, so that's just a little cover which we're gonna put back on. We're going to feed this under here. Pop that back on. Obviously now there's another wire in there. It does make it a little bit tighter. So it's a bit tricky to get it through. But it's, it's a nice place. It's, it's nice if you can get it under there, ideally, rather than having a wire just trailing loose. There we go. Got it in there nicely. The rest of that wire now going up to the camera is absolutely secure. It's, it's fine. So now we're going to start routing this through in the nicest possible way. So I want to follow this harness here. I could go behind here, but I'm going to follow this harness and we're going to cable tight to it. I follow it through here. There's a little gap down here, which brings it out around here. So I'm going to thread the plug through. Right, so where this comes through, there's loads of room between the air box here and the side of the bike. So you can, if you want to, go straight down the outside and bring it back around here. But I think that looks a bit messy. So if you can, try and get it back down here again. Uh, hang on, hold on a second. This, uh, you can actually push it through. It doesn't need threading. It's just some, there's some tubes in there and it looks like you have to thread it through, but it will make its way through just by, just by pushing it through. So you're making sure you're avoiding the back of the radiator or the back of the fan. There is a cage on the fan, so I won't worry too much. That is now miles away from the fan and it's down behind the other side of this reservoir. I'm now going to bring it along here. There's lots of, there's other harnesses down here, which you can basically, you're telling the, the harness to join the ride really, just to join the other, the other wires and hoses that are already down here. So there's the cable there. I'm going to, just probably doesn't need it, but I like to make sure I'm going to, Put a cable tie around the frame of the bike there. And now the wire is coming across here. So this, this uh, plastic trunking just along here, this is where there's loads of OEM harnesses already in here off the bike. Um, but as you can see, there's an, open, there's an open area here, like guttering on your house. <clears throat> and their harnesses are in there and you can actually poke the cable into there. So I'm gonna bring this around on the inside of this wire. All right, so hopefully you can see that. I'm just popping that down inside there. Now you've got this tiny little, um, this, this plastic thing here, whatever it is. Just going to attach a cable tie there. It's not necessary, but I am the cable tie king or the zip tie king. There we are. So there's a tiny little bit of slack in the wire going back there, but nowhere near enough to cause any problems. It's nowhere near a moving object, that's the important thing. So now, just by tucking this back inside here, under the fuel tank, and then we get this part here, but as you know, we've loosened it. So I'm gonna put my fingers under here, lift that up, and pull it across. And that is completely in the little gully with all the other wires. And there we are, that's how you thread the wire through.
Before we start putting the front back together again, we need to bring the DC converter into, into play. So here's the DC converter. So these are the two wires, the red and the black, that need to go down to the battery. So I'm just sitting the DC converter just there for now. And there's a fuse inside here, one amp fuse. We're gonna pull this out and put that in towards the end. So following a very similar path, we're gonna go under here. So lift this up again, pop these wires up over the top. So it's right, in, they're right inside that gully. Nothing's trapped. But there's plenty of room. You can see I can move back and forwards. It's, it's not trapped at all. I'm popping this down behind the framework. There we go. So it's very important we have access to that, that fuse. There we go. There's a lot of confusion over batteries and how you should connect and disconnect them. And when I say it's confusion, it's very simple because you always start with negative, you then do the positive, well, sorry, negative, ground, negative, positive, you know, negative, ground, same thing. You start with negative, so you always remove negative first, then you remove the positive, but then when you put things back together again, you put the positive on and then you put the negative on. Agreed. But we're putting stuff on right now, and sometimes when I'm working on batteries, I'm taking stuff off and putting stuff on all at the same time. It's, uh, it's very, very confusing, so you never know which one you're supposed to do first. But anyway, we're going to put the positive on first, but we're undoing the positive first, which that's the confusing bit. <laughs> we're undo we're un so to do that, we're having to undo positive, aren't we? Do you see where I'm going with it? Is it that, that, that's where I think some of the confusion is. I have to undo that first, but, but you're supposed to undo negative first. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna put the positive on first. So that's the positive side fixed to the battery terminal. And then the negative side. Right, so now this is in, we're just gonna tuck this wire. We're just gonna tuck this wire in here. Uh, we can actually put the fuse in now as well, put the fuse back in. And pop the strap back on. Whilst it's like that, we may as well put the cover back on too. Don't forget the little red cover. Okay, and just a tiny dab of silicone grease on those, on these grommets, just so we don't lose them and the, the cover slides in nicely. Now you'll probably notice straight away, because we've got power, we've got a tiny little blue LED on the DC converter. Now what I'm going to do, because we're leaving the DC converter here, I'm gonna chop this yellow cable down to a reasonable length, to around about there, be fine. Strip the wire back. And then using a posi tap connector, this is a posi tap connector, so what, this is what they look like. We're going to access the switched live in the back of this fuse holder. So we're going to the 7.5 amp fuse, and I can tell you now it's the red and blue wire on the 7.5, and the other one is red and green. Now the red and blue is where the power is coming into the fuse. We don't want to take it on the other side of the fuse because this doesn't need to be fused. So that 7.5 amp fuse is for something else which, is, which is, needs to be on that switched, on that switched circuit. So we're going 
before the fuse, not after. To go after would be the red and green wire. So using a little hobby knife, I'm going to cut the BMW insulation tape back a little bit. So being very careful you don't cut into wires. They're very thick wires, so there's no real chance, not unless you're being very ham-fisted. You shouldn't cut any wire. So I'm just cutting the, the cover back. Here we are. Okay, so that has now gone into that wire and pierced the sheath ever so ever so slightly. Like even if you took this posi tap off again, it's all it's done is left a pinprick going into the wire. A lot of people are worried about entering into any of the loom on their bikes, it really is a worry that's not worth worrying about. You need to connect power to your bike regardless by going to the battery, which we've done, but you need that switched live to make this work. And you have you have to enter the harness somewhere. It doesn't matter if you're going to a can smart, it doesn't matter if you, because some people can go through the can smart, but all we're talking about is a pin prick into the harness. Right now, that's not even live because the bike's not on. So there's no life coming through there. So then we're gonna grab the yellow wire, pop that into here, tighten that up, give it a tug, that's now connected. And that is how you connect switch live. So this black cable, I'm just gonna thread this back through where it came from. And then we're gonna fit the DC converter just here. But I'm gonna get all the front back together again first. So let's put this back on top again. If you haven't got one of these impact drivers, just a normal wrench will do. So with the fuse holder, we're gonna, gonna plug that back in to where it came from. Then the little chip for the pro chip, the little blanking cover for the pro chip, we're gonna pop that back into its holder. That's nice and neat down there. We're gonna put a little bit of tape behind here so that sticks down onto there, so it's nice and tidy. Right, so this one is gonna fit just here. So I'm gonna set up the camera in the exact same way as I set up the front. So I'm not gonna show you that one because you know exactly how that's done. I'm gonna set it up, but then I'm gonna show you when I'm actually fitting it to the back. Right, so here we have it again. I fitted the, the mount to the camera, and now what we're gonna do is fit it to the same screw that the indicator is using. Now, something which some people might not want to uh, see is if you notice very closely, the writing on the block underneath is upside down. Now, the actual block itself, it's not completely, what's the word I'm looking for? Symmetrical, if you like. If you have it the other way around, well then the pieces coming down from the mount, the arch that goes over the camera, they protrude and then you get like a clash with the, the flat edge of the mount coming off the bike. So by turning it over, it, it gives you a little platform so it sits just nicely. That, that, that wasn't an issue on the front of the bike because the mount came in from a different angle. It came in from a 90 degree angle from where it is right now. So that has to be like that unless you start sticking washers in between, which then can also look a little bit messy. The routing of the rear camera wire has to come up inside the back. Now it's trying to find the best route for it. Now I find from experience, because if you try and get it through here, it's gonna get caught when you put the back down. It has to come across the back like here. It goes back in through this natural gap, which they've made in the GS, and then it goes up inside. It's hard, it's gonna be very hard to show you this, but I'll do my very best. So to do this, you need to come up here and undo the Torx inside here. Now with this, you'll notice that there's, a, there's like a tongue and groove. To do this, you have to pull backwards and then it drops down. So you pull back 
that then drops down. You've got little tongues going into grooves on the under tray as well. You just leave them in. Just leave, leave them sitting in there absolutely fine. Right, so if you look at the, the, the indicator, the indicator cable just here, this is the indicator cable, and it goes up, right up, just here, and goes through a hole, which is the same hole which the, the tongue from this tiny tray, which is coming down with the registration plate on it, it shares the same hole. So we're basically gonna be taking that camera cable through that same hole. So I'm gonna thread the, the actual plug through now. So that's through. So that, that is now in the same compartment as uh, where the DVR is gonna be, and where the GPS is. All right, and you can lose a bit of slack in here if you want to. So remember, it's gonna come in like this. So I'm gonna put that thing, that, uh, that, those two tongues back into the two grooves. And then we're gonna get this back up again, but we need to get this rooted. That's it. Right, so I'm, I'm pushing this all the way towards the front of the bike, but obviously it won't go all the way up because you've got this tiny little letterbox, or this little gap which has to go th over this, this tongue up here. So you go up, you then pull it towards you a bit, towards the back, so then it goes up and then you push back over it so it sits there. So once it, you know it's in place, it won't fall down unless you pull it back again. So then, then we put the screws back in to secure it. Perfect. Right, so now we're ready to get the DVR. Here's the DVR unit. Now, when the, the top cover of the bike is back on, we wanna make sure we can access the cover where the SD card is and things like the reset switch and just stuff like that. So you need to have it this way around really, not this way around. And it's literally gonna sit there just like that. Right, so this is the rear camera. So it's very, very clearly written on here. There's R and F, so put that in the rear. In the kit, you get these tiny little screws so you can attach them up. Now I'm gonna grab the front plug. Now we've got to make sure we channel this really, really nicely. So we're gonna bring the, the DC converter up, the, up at the same time. So there's that one there. And then the, the front camera. I'll plug that one in. And then on this side, you'll see it says GPS and power. You can't get them wrong. Like I like to check anyway, that is the power coming in there. If I try and put it into the GPS, that, well, it's basically two females. So it's not gonna work. Connect the power up and connect up the GPS, which is hanging over the side. So all the connections have now been made. Now all I need to do is tidy it up, which means, yeah, you guessed it, cable ties. And there we have it, nice and tidy. That's a really, really tidy job. So far so good, so now we're just gonna put it back together again, 10 minutes. So do you remember we took a couple of screws off this left-hand panel? So we're gonna get those back on. Now I'm gonna put the, the top back on. So with this one, you literally just put it over the top like this, 
and then you push it down. until you feel it click all the way in. You can just feel along with your fingers and you, you, you know if it's in or not. That's it, that's all the way in now. I've got the matching, I can feel it's all matching all the way down. There's no bulges or anything. So that's all the way on. Oh, that's the wrong screw, got a shoulder on it. So you get some screws with shoulders and some without. It's quite easy to see which ones are what, like, I would probably recommend that you make a note of which one's going where. Right, and then we're gonna put the nose section back on. So when you get this on, you need to just use your common sense with this one really. As it goes on, there are little circular grommets that go over tiny prongs that are right on the very, very front. So you need to make sure they push on. So I've got them on, I saw them from the top and out. I can feel them with my thumbs underneath. So that is now on. And then at the top, you just make sure it all sits in place. That That is now ready to be screwed in place. So we're gonna start with the screws underneath. And the screws at the top. And the screws on the side. Do you remember the little rivet on the front? And on the side here, so pop in the first part of the rivet and then the pin goes through. Uh, now we need to put the side panel on. So with the side panel, you've got this like square hole, rectangular hole just there. That's got to go over this spring. So we pop that on. There we go. That's now in place, ready for one, two, three, four, five screws to go on. I'll pop the wheel that way so I can access those. And the other side. So putting these screws back in place now. And it's really important you don't forget about the, the screws right at the very front behind the handlebar. And the ring for the, the tank like I say, if you don't have a tank bag ring and you don't have to do any of this, you don't need to move any screws around the fuel to do this job. There we go. All right, then we've got the side panels. As you can see, that is the wrong one. That's the other side. So you remember the trick to this is it goes in slightly back and then it slides forwards, making sure you get the, the bits in the right place. Yeah, that's, that's in place. Pop the other side on now and then I'll put the screws through. These are much longer screws on the GS. Right, we're, we're almost there. Right, so a little bit tricky for me because I've got this, this cable to contend with. I'm sure we will figure it out. Now to make it easier, you can take the, the, the nuts and bolts out. Well, just so you can see that the holes are perfectly lined up. But um, I can see that they are, yeah. I 
So this wouldn't normally be here, so I'm um, sorry this is slowing me down a little bit. Right, that's in place. Tighten it back down again. Yeah, just confirm that's really, really tight. Let's put the seat back on. And before we put the rear seat on, we need to put the SD card inside here. So this customer's gone for a 128 gigabyte SD card. So a little tip with this, sometimes you don't know which way the SD card has to go, whether it goes that way or goes that way. Well, I can tell you right now, the contacts need to face upwards. So you have to be very careful because if this springs out, it's gonna flick off and it could fall back inside here. So it might be a good idea just for precaution is to lay something out just underneath it, a bit of a cloth. So if it does fall out, it's gonna land right onto this microfiber cloth. So I'm gonna pop it into the, the hole. Now I know my fingers can't push that in. So I'm just gonna get something with a bit of a leading edge, same same kind of uh, thickness and pop that in. And we get clicked in nicely, close that down. And now we're gonna go through the formatting side of it. Obviously this, this cable is causing a few little problems for me, but I just wanna make sure that the seat fits, fits on it okay. Before we do that, I'm just gonna make sure it all powers up okay. So I've got the, the key to the bike here. So turn on the bike, and we're waiting for these lights to light up. I'm also going to grab my phone and link to it. I go to my settings and I go to Wi-Fi. This is now kicking out a Wi-Fi signal. There it is, Inoff K297B0. So click on there. The password as default is going to be 12345678. That could be changed. We're now connected to the DVR. I'm going to close down that there, go to the actual app, which is there. I'm now going to hit on the cog in the middle. Right, here we go. SD card format error. Okay, so it needs to be formatted. Press OK to format it and be aware that all files in SD card will be deleted. That's fine. So we're going to press, it says press OK, but press yes. Right, this is now formatting. So just keep your eye on the screen. Request timeout. What's actually happening right now is it's it, that that has just formatted, and now the device is rebooting. So if I try, if I press the cog now, it says I've got no connection at all. So what we have to do now is go back to the settings on your phone and reconnect the Wi-Fi. See, it's disconnected from it. That no more Mr. Wi-Fi is my own Wi-Fi here in, in the workshop. <laughs> so reconnect to in of K2. We won't need to put a password in this time because it's, we've already put it in there. So now we are connected. We're going to go back to the, the in of. And now we're going to hit on the cog again and you'll see it's connecting to the, to the device and there's all the settings. There's the name. We can change the name. So I'll tell the customer you can change the name. We can change the password. No firmware upgrade is required on this. If it was, it will flash up on the screen that it needs a firmware upgrade. So I'm happy with that. That is now connected and it will start recording. So on this screen, we can go straight to document and you'll see if I go to files in the uh, files in camera. So the camera is this, is the DVR. Go to files on camera and straight away, you're going to see if I go to continuous recording, we've already got a library of historic video recordings, which is basically inside here. So there's one minute for, for, for rear camera, one minute for front camera. If I want to go and hit F at the top, we can see we've got two minutes of recording from the front camera. If I go to R, we've got two minutes of recording for the rear camera. If I hit all, you can see all four. So come out of there. If you want to set up your cameras perfectly, so on the center stand, take it outside or something, press the camera there, and this way you can set it all up so if I go just to front camera only, 
you can see that's the front. It's slightly twisted to the to the left. So obviously it's, it, it looks like the my workshop is leaning across to the to the right hand side. If I go to rear, you should see the lines of the garage and it's slightly going the other way. But this is good enough. This is the dash cam in the day. This is good enough. And you've got front and rear showing both. Right, so let's just make sure that that rear seat will fit on okay because this is protruding a little bit because of the uh, amount of stuff this customer's got going on under the back of his bike. That's fine. It's absolutely fine. Let's wheel it outside and see what it looks like.